In this lesson, we're going to cover PowerShell. And PowerShell is the preferred method for command line management of Windows Server and partner technologies, and also for creating scripts to automate functions. There have been other technologies in the past, such as WMI, VBScript, JScript, and they are all still valid. However, really, PowerShell is highly extensible. It's very easy to extend its capabilities through the use of new modules of functionality. It also has a very clear syntax on how you use the language, and it can be used for both scripting and interactive command shells. So PowerShell v3 is the current version in Windows Server 2012 and is available as part of Windows Server 2012 and Windows 8, and is also available as a download for Windows Server 2008 SP2, 2008 R2 SP1, and Windows 7 SP1. By default, you'll see on your desktop of a Windows Server 2012 installation, you actually have a PowerShell Quick Launch added automatically. And if I launch this, it opens up a PowerShell window. Notice this is actually running as administrator. There are many times where you need to be running PowerShell with administrative credentials. So for example, if this was not running as an administrator, if I was to right click, you'll actually see the option to run as administrator. So if I was not logged on, for example, directly onto the server, if I was running remotely, I need to make sure I'm running as an administrator. So I would say run as administrator. There are actually a number of different PowerShell interfaces available. If I open up the start screen and just start typing, so I'm just gonna start typing PowerShell, you'll actually see I have the regular Windows PowerShell interface, which I'm using right now. There's also an x86 version. This is the 32-bit version of PowerShell. Now, typically, you are going to want to use the 64-bit version. However, if you are, for example, using a 32-bit PowerShell module or maybe connecting to a 32-bit computer, then I may need to use the 32-bit or the x86 version of PowerShell. But typically, you would just use the 64-bit version. So one of the first things you're going to want to do with PowerShell is experiment to look around the environment. If you experience with the command prompt interface, some of the commands will actually work already. So for example, the CD command still works. I can still use DIR. In reality, these are actually just aliases, alternate names for native PowerShell commands. So if I do get alias, we'll actually see that CD calls the set location PowerShell commandlet. When I do a DIR, is actually doing the get child item. So I can use certain familiar commands, but behind the scenes, they are using native PowerShell. And when you're scripting, for example, you should always use the native PowerShell commands rather than any kind of alias related to the command prompt. I can also access other types of storage beyond just the file system. For example, if I do get ps drive, and I can do tab completion. If I type tab here, it completes the command for me. These are all the different types of environment I can access. So I see my familiar C drive, D drive, E drive, but I can access my environment variables. I can access registry areas, management environments. So it actually gives me more interaction. So if this was a domain controller or I loaded in the Active Directory module, I can access Active Directory. I can access certificate stores, remote desktop services, IIS. It's very, very extensible. So for example, I can actually change to one of these areas. So if I do set location to ENV, and then I'm gonna do my get child item, it shows me all the environment variables. So I can navigate all these areas as if it was a file system. Now often there will be confusion of what command do I need to use? PowerShell uses a verb noun naming format. So everything is always a verb, dash a noun for the commandlets. And this makes it far simpler to understand which command you may want to use. I can actually run, for example, get command, and it will show me every command available. And obviously there are a lot of them across all the different modules. But I can say, well, get me commands related to a certain noun. So show me everything related to path, for example. So I can convert path, join path. I can then get help on different commands. So let's say the test path commandlet. And it's showing me help on what that commandlet does. I can get more detailed help. 
by adding the detailed switch. I can get it to show me examples of how I may use it using the example switch. So one of the key areas that makes PowerShell so easy to use is this fantastic help system and this very intuitive naming. I always think least cognitive distance. I think what is the action I wish to perform that's likely going to be the command I need to use. There are many modules in PowerShell. So for example, if I was to say get module, I can see the modules I currently have loaded. I can also see, well, what are the modules that are available? And again, I can use tab completion. So this now shows me all of the different modules that are available for me to use in my path. So what's actually happening behind the scenes? If I launch the system control panel applet and go to advanced environment variables, I'll actually see a PS module path. So this is where all the paths are registered in PowerShell that it's searching for automatically. Now, prior to PowerShell v3, to use some of these modules, I would actually have to manually load in the module. For example, to import a module, I would just say import module and then the name. So maybe I would say storage. And then all the commands in that module would be available to me. So I now have all these extra commands. But one of the great things about PowerShell v3 is it now features a auto load type functionality. So if I just start typing a commandlet name, even if that module is not loaded, it will auto load that module. So again, if I look at my modules currently loaded, I have these five loaded. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna use the same commandlet from this module I created, send wake up. And this is something I wrote that wakes up a remote machine. It sends it a magic packet. But if I do a get module, notice it is now imported. So in PowerShell v3, if I start typing a commandlet and it's not currently loaded, it will actually auto load the module for me. I would not recommend you rely on this functionality, not because it doesn't work, because it could be ambiguous. If I may have the same command defined in different modules on the system, which shouldn't happen, but it may, well, I may get unpredictable results on which module it's gonna use when I run that command. So you should always manually load in your modules in your environment you know exactly what you're using.